started using Keynote, right? Now, most people don't have Keynote. Keynote has fantastic features, right? Talk about interoperability, open educational resources and technology. There seems to be some parallels here. Um, but I am going to talk to you about what's in it up. Sure. Um, so, I can't stand behind the podium mostly because people can't see me. So that's another issue. That's another technology issue. That is my mother and father issue. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? That's another issue. We start with the issues, but we solve them. That's the whole idea. Okay. You so just what? bridged an achievement gap. I'm so sorry. You just bridged an achievement gap. You can't win. Wait, digital tools. So, start at CK12. Do you know about anybody who heard about CK12 here? Show of hands. Okay, so I have lots of educating to do. but. Basically, when we started about uh, 2007, the idea was to help out in K-12 education where we could, and we wanted to kind of figure out what was the most need at that time, and I think the need is still there, which was uh, content and access to content and the old technology that we had been using and are still using, textbooks, right? So everybody was very familiar with textbooks and the way, you know, the printed format of it. But do I need to go into in this audience what the issues are with print format? No. I think I'm going to skip that. So, okay, we're going to make it online. We're going to make it updatable, and we're going to make it uh, <coughs> open educational resources. The only reason that I identify with open educational resources is because you need to make a statement that everybody understands. An OER is a statement of your philosophy of the way that you work. And this is the reason I state that I am a part of OER. Even if OER wasn't there, I promise you everything we are doing would have been available to everybody and anybody. We understand the idea of access, the limitation of uh, technology as we just saw, um, but there's still ways technology lets us uh, give everyone access. We can give all kind of um, content online, on computers, on devices, wherever we go. But we still have the opportunity of reading, reaching students that don't have those devices, don't have online capability, just by printing <coughs> what they need, not a big pieces, not everything in one place, not one, everything, uh, one size fits all. So template, pro, you know, providing templates for K-12 was actually quite a challenging issue for us, but we've stuck to it and we make sure that we provide that even today. Here's another beast that we have to deal with. I understand that, you know, K-12 needs to be uh, regulated to some extent because you can't understand velocity unless you know motion. And you cannot understand acceleration unless you know velocity. <coughs> and there are many, many such concepts, you know, additions and number space, number places and all that. So I understand that, but I, this is not, this talk is not about this, but I just wanted to state that we do provide curriculum aligned content. Teachers, good modules, all kind of teachers' additions with misconceptions and understandings with, you know, anything a teacher might need, you provide. Teachers are now creating their own videos, creating simulations to put it into the content so students get it in one place. I'm talking ahead of myself, but here, here's another one, learning styles. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, uh, auditory or all visual and all those kind of learning styles, but 
the learning that you need to do given different modalities. Which one will make sense to you? Because each concept may have different ways of learning. Somebody might pick up something just by seeing it. I still to two date cannot imagine electrons moving in the nerve fiber. I don't know. When is someone going to make that, you know, get it across in my head? I, I have no <coughs> idea. But, so animations. This is so much easy to do with online. And this is the only time I'm going to take you out of the presentation. Cardboard boxes rest on a smooth, Very simple. frictionless table. It doesn't matter what it says. There's a question illustrating that kind of question. I don't think you can hear it. We know that the force pulling on one end of the string is measured by balancing it with a known weight acting on the other end. In other words, force equals mass times acceleration. So imagine if you had questions, yeah, and you put you a little bit of visual simulation there, just a small amount. It doesn't need to be extensive. The just enough for a student to get a grasp of what it is that you need to do with it. Okay. Um, so it, it's a, you know, I, I, if you missed it, come to me later, and I can help you. So tools are very important. But today, I don't know any of you have seen the New School Ventures website where they put together uh, four components of education. Uh, and I forget them, so excuse me, you can go and I'm getting to be old. But, uh, so if you look at each one of those four major categories, has lots of people providing tools. But mostly, each one of them is providing one tool, whether it's you know, content, whether it's uh, assessment, whatever it might be, each one of them is providing one tool. What we need today is tools in one place. Okay, a scissor is going to be doing what a scissor does. But if, what if we can give you that capability in one place so you don't have to go around looking for tools? One of the most fascinating things that happened during our life, silent, uh, life cycle this past few years is that people move not just from donating content or, or giving us content, but actually donating to us the software they had built. <coughs> and that's really, really amazing because, you know, many, as you know, the dot-com boom, there was so much work going on. So I kind of think about education uh, dot-com happening right now. So people are building all these, either they can't get funding or they have the, you know, they have the right ideas, but they can't take it to the, to the end. So they've started saying, can you take our, and, and make it available to people? And because we, it's all free, we put it in our website and make all those tools available as a package. SAT prep, um, uh, you know, interactive math programs. Now we're building on top of that to finish. So if there's an algebra program, we're putting out the whole math course based on that kind of philosophy. And, and the idea is that we don't want to put, tell you what to do, what to use. You decide, as a student, as a teacher, how best to learn. We'll provide what you might need. So what's next? I just give away. So the learning and teaching focus is what we are moving towards. And I'm going to go a little bit fast. So this is the basic idea behind our uh, 2.0. The idea is to break down what you might need to learn into concepts. So this is one concept tree. This is the algebra concept tree. So if you think it's algebra or chemistry, whatever, one of them. So my memory, I'm 56. <laughs> then I pause. So if you think about each one of them being, a, a, you know, at the end, this is a concept that you absolutely must learn kind of go back up and learn the major concepts. We've broken down everything a K-12 student might need to learn, and we provided this kind of mapping behind our machine. But it takes, I'll show you in the next few slides, um, uh, a quick, it, 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 these are just mocks, but it, the work's coming. So think about five, there aren't that many concepts you would have to learn. So 5,000, say. 
So if, you, if we give you, excuse me, anyway, if you give if you give you a tree from where you can actually start um, kind of navigating yourself through the learning, whether you're a student or a teacher, you can actually do most of the stuff yourself. Anytime you come across any problems, you can actually use your teacher mentor, your peer mentor, or your parents to help you navigate or help you learn that uh, concept. So concepts by itself become very, very important because there are many <coughs> concepts that are needed for, so if you think about graphing, graphing is needed in algebra, but it's also needed in biology and statistics and physics and in many, many other places. And these are small examples. But you've got to know the essence of graphing before you can go ahead and apply those to various other uh, concepts. So if we can actually say you're having trouble it's in um, you know, biology and uh, graphing some a population or something, we can take you back through this path where that we've created and have you learn uh, the concepts so that you don't have to kind of let it go and have big cracks in your learning. Uh, so this is one example of a concept. It's a little bit amount of content. It will have all kind of modalities, the multimodalities, the videos, the interactive elements. All those go in one space. In, so think about uh, uh, or, uh, illustration of how a cell actually divides, or a video of what, you know of what you're learning, and vocabulary. <coughs> The thing that we provided for is we've given you that guidance I was talking about and take you to the next concept of the previous concept so that, you know, you can learn in context. Now, if you dis we actually also provide related concepts, which, has, which is not shown here, but those related concepts can take you across the maps to where else you might need to go. Many other things you can you know switch to a teacher view, we can give you lesson plans, we can give you everything you might need, including editing. So in place editing. So that's that's where we are. Um, just a book detail of you know all the chapters and I thought I have to show you that at least. It's by site content. People said, Oh, I don't like this slide, and I said, I do because it's chocolate. <laughs> so I, I keep it. And, but it's true, even if you think about students, what do they want? They don't want to be overwhelmed when they walk into an, any new concept they're learning. So they want bite-sized content. Chocolate for learning, right? <laughs> this was, you know, I, in the end, if you give them everything, the multi-modality, the multi-support they would need, nothing by itself works. Nothing. Anybody who's saying my system or my method works, don't, don't believe me. You need everything that you can possibly give because something will spark someone's aha moment. And it may not happen from one thing, it may happen from everything. Text, text is getting a bad you know, rep, but really text is very important. You still need to read and write no matter what happens. What happens if we have no electricity? What are we going to do? We're going to sit in the classroom and say, OK, well, I can't do anything today, no electricity. <laughs> so it is still important that we have backups. So what did we do at, you know, that, you know, we have seen some really good results. Yes. I'm sorry? Signing out the time. Oh, I thought you had a question. <laughs> sorry. So, <laughs> oops. OK, so what uh, <coughs> I wanted to show you a system, of uh, 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 algebra system that we have created. So I'm going to skip out of this for one second. I think I'm almost finished with the slides, too. So if I go here. We have a system that people have been using. And this is a whole algebra system that we align to the standards, in this case in California, 
and each one of them is a, um, you know, a unit by itself. So we've given everything <coughs> you would need to learn um, in one place. So not only does it have just the content itself, but you can actually, when you get, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole path because I don't have much time left. But in the end, it takes you to practice. And practice is very important, as we all know. Now, we can just say, I'm, it's going to say I'm wrong. But it's OK, because this is where the system remembers where you made the mistakes. I remember taking exams when I had to wait for, and struggling over with some question, most of the questions. But that's another story. But when you think about those exams and those problems, you get the answer back in a week, two weeks, a month. By that time, you've forgotten what your struggle was. You've lost interest. All you want to know, know is, how did I do? So technology affords us this, which is very important in learning and feedback. Too. So there's all kind of assessments. So let me go back to my and show you some of the results. So I'm going to go, you know, so we, we provide, uh, uh, feed, you know, all the num uh, uh, stats you would need, all kind of different stats. I'm just going to show you this. But in, uh, in using that algebra program, this, if you look at this, this is the California 2000 to 2000, 2008 to 2011 progress. The dark portions of all these graphs are uh, advanced levels. And these, the lighter colors are all proficient. So if you think about each one of these schools, here's an LPS, LPS is leadership <coughs> public school at Hayward. In 2008, they had three B students who were advanced and 20 who were proficient. By 2011, they have very amazing results. LPS Richmond, and Richmond, I don't know many of you know, is a very, very difficult district. Guns and, you know, um, violence and all that stuff. Very poor, none, no, uh, you know, no uh, fancy stuff yeah, for the lack of time here. 2010 and 2011, in one year, the difference. Hayward, and this is Riverside School District in one year, just using interactive stuff. Um, so, so this is some more uh, about Richmond. They went, you know, 30% had gained two years. And that's a lot of gain in one year. Do you know how they, how did, how did they implement the flex? Okay, one second. Let me just finish this. They also got uh, 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 Intel this School of Distinction in Math and Science in, in the way that it was the three finalists from the region. So what they did, so let me tell you about what they did. They actually took CK-12 content. Their population was two to five years below grade. So they took that content made it two to, year, two to five years uh, below the content. When the teachers came in, they were not experienced. So when I brought them into CK12, have you heard about the micro, uh, uh, micro finance story with Dr. Eunice, who started it, gave 27 women $42. Mm -hmm. And they cried because they've never had that much money. It was an issue of empowerment. When you tell a person, I believe in you, you can do this. They did. They rose up to the occasion. The teachers actually felt like they had, you know, they, here they were, they were responsible for something. Very young teachers, not very experienced, but they all got together. The biology teachers got together. The math teachers got together. They created content that was relevant to them, not what I had to provide, not what CK12 had to provide. So when they created that, they actually also put a le level of literacy on top of that, which is very simple questions every few, uh, you know, spread apart. What was this concept? What did you understand? You know, just those questions. 
and then added to that the flex book, uh, the flex map. We're now producing flex algebra, uh, geometry, statistics, you know, the whole map <coughs> of the uh, uh, content you would need. Um, so, actually, this. Uh, this results work. I, I don't talk about it because it's not mine to talk about. It's all their work. But what we do is we provide what they need. And I think you heard about the Utah result too. Washington is also starting to think about doing all this. Utah had David Wiley found, at the very least, using our content versus publisher's content, you at the least, very, very least, get the same result. Guess what? You're free. So anyway, these are some of the, uh, we've delivered six million units so far, uh, all free. Thank you so much.